Yay, another 40k video. You might know I love Arch Warhammer, but when he says It's always fun to ruin somebody's day with science. I have to say, I can do that too. And today I'm going to ruin your day just a little bit. So let's listen what he was saying. Actually bring some real life science into this because it is always fun to ruin somebody's day with science, and I do it to Star Wars all the time, so it's only fair that I do it to 40k occasionally as well. Now, if the disc fired from the shuriken pistol was actually monomolecular, I'm going to have to re-record that word about 20 times every time I'm saying it, by the way, just so you know my suffering. Anyways, if it was actually that thin, let's just go with that, one single molecule thick or smaller, then it would by definition be able to cut through literally anything with absolutely no resistance, since it would not be cutting through the molecules or parting strands of molecules. It would literally just be pushing two molecules apart. This would mean that it could cut through a block of solid steel just about as easily as it could cut through a piece of paper. So, the problem here is that real physics work a little bit different. I mean, we talk about 40k, and in 40k, red is faster, as we all know, so if you just believe in it, it works, and I guess this works with Shuriken weapons, you know, for the Elder pretty much, as with all the other stuffs. But if you would transport this thing in our universe, it would so suck. You see, all the Shuriken weapons are the idea that you have... Uh, device, a gun if you like, with this block of ammunition and the gun cuts ammunition that looks like ninja shuriken out and blasts them right through the air into the enemy, which is a silly idea in the very beginning. So it works pretty much like this. You have this block and the weapon, yes, this is a weapon, and then you throw the shuriken out and the shuriken is, has some form like this. So when I read all the fluff around of this, uh, of this shuriken, I expected that they are, let's say, a millimeter thick or something like that and razor blade sharp and it will still make for a funny, silly weapon, especially if we talk about an army that is highly evolved and millions of years above everybody else. But however, these, these, these throw shurikens at you, okay, but Arch pretty much did say in the rest of the video that the whole thing is so thin. Monomolecular is the word. So here we have a graphic. First we have just a disc with a razor blade sharp thingy. The thing is, if you shoot with these things, you don't have a lot of ammunition. Or you have the other thing, you make the whole thing monomolecular, which makes it ridiculous, blah 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 blah. Uh, Arch Warhammer thinks that this thing will kill you easily and instantly, and I show you why this is not the case. You see, you need energy. You need energy to kill someone, and it's not the thing that hits you, it's the energy within the thing. And the energy is calculated by mass by acceleration. And the mass of a thing that is monomolecular thick is zero. It, it's pretty much zero, it's a little bit more than zero, but it is so close to zero that it is way closer than to something that we would call something. I mean. You could look through that thing from all the sides, you would not even see that. The idea here is that you have more or less infinite ammunition in your little block of something. Um, if you have monomolecular discs, but they don't hold mass. So if the mass goes near zero, it doesn't matter how fast you accelerate that. The energy goes pretty much down to zero, so uh, it does not work. You could argue that you can use very, 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 very dense materials, something on the periodic system with the order number of 10,000 or something. It was be, would be very, very heavy, even though it is very, very thin. The thing is that then your magazine would weigh around, I don't know, five tons or something like that. This has some impractical implications. So here we have the flesh, that's the thing you want to penetrate and to hurt, but outside the flesh there is skin, and skin is a little bit tougher than flesh, and outside of skin there is pretty much always clothing, except for orcs, but they have so thick skin that covers again like coating. So 
if you throw the shuken to your enemy, you have another thing to overcome, and this is air. If you the particles, you, you might not know that, but the air is comprised of a lot of atoms, and when you throw something that is comprised of just I don't know, one thousand or ten thousand pieces of atoms, other atoms become then a factor. So if you throw this through the air, it won't go the straight way, it would go somewhere else. So aiming becomes somewhat of a gamble. But in the next step, that's a step that really is funny. You don't have a lot of energy in this thing because friction and other reasons. But still, if you have some energy within that, you have absolutely no structural power. So this thing will bend and turn and break apart and would do all the funny things and I, I don't think that you could penetrate a t-shirt. Uh, honestly, you, you, you could not and if you could not penetrate my skin. So how would this look like? Well, something like this. You, you throw a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot of shurikens to your enemy and it would be quite an annoyance but it would not really be fatal. It would really really be an annoyance and in regards to the howling benches I would to say it might be enough to um, to bring the guys to, to look the other way for not getting their eyes hurt or something like that and then you can cut them to pieces but it's not a viable weapon. If you, on the other hand, take the more, let's say, a realistic approach, and the approach as I understood it based on the lore, uh, that the shurikens indeed are one millimeter, two millimeter thick, it would then look more or less like that. You don't have all so many shurikens on hand, but those that you have can penetrate skin and a bit of armor. It's still not a great weapon, but uh, well, it is better than if it is more molecular. The thing is, you have to make the blades razor sharp. Yes, you can do that, but you have to give them some mass. That, on the other hand, means that you don't have thousands of uh, shurikens in one ammunition block. And I come to that a bit later. So the next thing is of course wind resistance. Resistance uh, is also a little bit of a problem if you have such a silly form. If you use something like a bullet, it is a completely different story. I don't know why they don't cut bullets out of this thing. And the, the thing is, it, it, it might be a good weapon for the benches. I think it's a better idea to give them a newsie or something. But however, the thing is, one thing that also talks into my idea of the fluff is that all the Elder have spare magazines. They would not know, need that if they had thousands and millions of shot with one magazine. So they have spare magazines. I would think they get about perhaps 100 shots out of that tops. So... <sighs> That's about it. It's just a little rant. I still love Arch Warhammer, but it is always great to destroy someone's day with science. So thank you for making my day.